Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer, one of the biggest car detailing channels on YouTube. And you guys are absolutely going to love this video today because I'm sharing the car washing kit. So all the essentials, the tools, products, and equipment that you're going to need to do a good job. So I'm going to go through everything that's here behind me today. And uh, it's going to be a one-stop shop. So you guys have all the necessities you need. We're going to do this right now and we're going to do it in quick fire style. So let's go ahead and start the show. <laughs> All right, so let's dive right into it. By the way, I'm gonna have links to all these tools, products, and equipment. I'll drop those links in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now, what is a regular car wash? Well, basically, uh, we're car detailing maniacs on this channel, right? So all the Pan the Organizer family, if you're new to my channel, by the way, welcome to the Pan the Organizer family. Uh, we're detailing enthusiasts or detailing professionals, weekend warrior, what have you not, uh, but we all love to taking care of our cars. Now, of course, we love washing our vehicles quite often. And to keep this simple, today I'm presenting a car washing kit. But before uh, you get too crazy about this in the comments, I'm only presenting the selections to make it simple today of a few companies and brands. I can go for each individual product through all the different brands that exist around the world for obvious reasons. This video would be way too long. So feel free to substitute any one of my recommendations for some uh, companies that you guys might love. So let's dive right into it. The first order of business when I'm detailing vehicles, regardless if it's interior or exterior detailing, wear some nitrile gloves. Protect yourselves, work in a well-ventilated space. If possible, if you're working outside, work in the shade. Uh, it's always best, right? At the very beginning of the day or very late in the afternoon. Try to avoid direct sunlight. Next, a wheel and tire cleaner. You're going to notice in this list, a lot of products have multiple uses. So instead of breaking out a product for the tires and a product for the wheels, I like to use dedicated products for both. So this one here is PNS Brake Buster. So again, you can clean wheels and tires. And by the way, all of these products I have demonstrated in individual videos. So if you want to dive further into us either seeing them in action or knowing more about them, uh, feel free. Over 700 videos on my channel so far with new ones added weekly. So check those out. But uh, to put everything into perspective, I'll drop also links to a few videos where you can see the exterior car washing process. So uh, all the steps that I go through and uh, all the products and tools that I use individually. So PNS Brake Buster, a great wheel and tire cleaner combo. I'm going to recommend an all-purpose cleaner. So these are cleaner degreasers uh, that can be used both inside and outside of the car. Uh, in this case here, we have Koch Kemi or Kosh Kemi, as some might say. This is a German brand. So this is Green Star. It's an all-purpose cleaner. Uh, basically, for heavy-duty use, you're going to dilute this one in five. So one part of product to five parts of water. Uh, and for some uh, medium-duty, one in 10. And for light-duty, one in 30. So you're going to put that in a sprayer bottle, by the way. And I made a recent video on my favorite uh, uh, bottles and sprayers. Uh, this one here is one that stood out because of its inexpensive price. So this is Carp Pro Dilute comes in this awesome bottle, has a very good ergonomical sprayer, it's inexpensive, and you have all the dilution ratios on the side. So this really uh, takes the guesswork out of it and makes things very simple. So you can mix your all-purpose cleaner and you can use that to uh, either clean wheels and tires if you need. Some people like to do that. Uh, some exterior trim. If you want to do a pre-treatment on the surface, so to help knock a bit of that traffic film and dirt and grime before you start pressure rinsing or pressure washing, uh, you can do that with an all-purpose cleaner. Next, if you have some bug guts on your vehicle, uh, you, perhaps you have even some tree sap or that kind of grime, a bug cleaner, right? So we have G Technique or G Technic W8. This is the version two bug remover. It works amazingly well. Uh, works fantastic on ceramic coated cars. It will not damage graphene coatings and ceramic coatings. Uh, bug removers, however, on maybe lighter waxes or paint sealants, which are not as chemical resistant, you might have to reapply a bit of that protection afterwards. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but it should be pretty much safe on pretty much all the surfaces. So a bug remover and you want to uh, remove those bug guts because if left too long on the paintwork, they're uh, acidic in nature and they can etch through the clear coat if they're le left on there to bake for too long. 
We're going to need a few brushes. So first of all, a tire brush. I like to use a stiff bristle nylon brush, kind of like this one. It's quite small, so it fits in your hand perfectly. And it just has these perfect bristles, the perfect size, and that's going to help scrub the previous layer of tire dressing. So when you're prepping your tires with either a degreaser, an all-purpose cleaner, or a dedicated wheel and tire cleaner. So this is going to help brush that up. So very, very important. For the wheels themselves, a few brushes we have first First of all, this easy detail brush. So this is good for getting into the barrel of the wheels, right? Uh, if you have some high gloss uh, black wheels, maybe not use this one because these are still nylon bristles and you could have a bit of light marring. So I'll give you an alternative uh, in just a few seconds. But uh, for the majority of the silver clear coated wheels, if you have steelies or anything that you need to reach into the, um, into the barrels, this is perfect for that. Uh, also, it fits behind big brake discs. So if you have huge calipers and huge discs, uh, to fit in between the wheel and that braking system. This is perfect because it's very pliable, as you can tell here, and it does a great job. You can also clean your inner fender wells with this. It works perfectly well. Now, for those of you who have uh, more fragile wheels or more expensive wheels, you might want to use something like this. Uh, this is the Microfiber Madness in Credi Brush. This is the flat version because as you can tell on the side, it's flat. It's basically a microfiber head, so this is as soft as it gets. Uh, it's still very pliable and you can bend it. So it can uh, contour itself to whatever shape you have. So this is perfect for cleaning the barrels as well. So this is another good one. For the wheel faces, you have two options. So if you have delicate wheels, I would recommend something like a boar hair brush, just like this. These uh, natural bristles, very, very soft and gentle for the, uh, for the uh, faces of the wheels. Another brush you're gonna need is a long handle brush, just like this one here. So what this does, it allows you to reach the inner fender wells, right? So in those wheel arches, if you're going deep inside there, uh, you need something with a uh, longer handle just like this one. And you can also get a mitt. So you're going to have one microfiber wash mitt for the paintwork, and I always have one mitt dedicated for the wheels. So in this case, a microfiber madness in Flare. And why it's called the Incrediflare for wheels, this one here has a little thumb. So basically, you can grab behind the spokes and you can clean in back of the wheels as well, but very soft material, very high quality. So this is the Incrediflare by Microfiber Madness. For your lug nuts, you're going to need something like this. So again, this is a boar hair brush. So this is perfect to fit into your lug nuts. You're going to see uh, these brushes often come up and we're going to have other ones because I'm going to do an interior kit, by the way. So come back in a few days for that second part of the video. I know you're going to guys are want to see that interior kit. So a brush for the lug nuts is super important. Next, we're going to have a mitt, a wash mitt, microfiber wash mitt for the paintwork. Very important to keep it soft. So there are generally two types that I like. So there's these chenille microfiber wash mitts. Why? Because they have these chenille type fibers so the dirt stays trapped inside there and it won't scratch the surface. Super gentle. And there's also, once again, microfiber madness. This is the Incredimit. So this one here, again, is in microfibers. So these are as gentle as it gets for your paintwork. So always use those to clean your paint. Next, we're going to move on to shampoos. Now, if you have a vehicle that has either a wax on it, a synthetic paint sealant, a ceramic coating, or a graphene coating, uh, or you're detailing multiple cars that have different styles of protection, you're going to want something that's versatile. But use always a quality car shampoo that's formulated for that. Do not use dishwashing liquid for regular washes. That is not the way to do. Those are degreasing agents that are way too powerful. They're going to strip protection. They're going to make your paint look dull as well. So uh, you would only use that for a full decon wash sometimes, but use a stripping shampoo if that's the case. But for your regular washes, use something like this. So this is one of my favorites, Adam's Car Shampoo. Not only does it smell good, but dual purpose. You can put it in your wash bucket, so for your hand wash, but you can also use this in your foam cannon. So it foams up quite nicely. Uh, a little goes a long way in your five gallon bucket, two or three ounces, and you're good to go. Uh, again, it smells like chemical blueberry, so it has this nice smell, but tons of lubrication. Adams is known for its quality shampoos. Uh, and so this is versatile, again, so in a foam cannon or in a wash bucket, on regardless of what protection you have on your paint. If you have a coating, either a ceramic coating or a graphene coating, one of my favorite dedicated shampoos for coating for coatings is the CarPro Reset. 
This is a more intensive shampoo and it really helps to restore the hydrophobic properties of coatings because it cuts down on the traffic film, especially if you use it regularly. I wash my car personally twice weekly uh, and I know a lot of you guys as well love washing your cars. So on coatings, CarPro Reset, uh, this can be used in your wash bucket and it also can be used in your foam cannon for the pre-wash stage. So uh, double duty, fantastic. Now Pan, what happens if I don't have access to free flowing water, a garden hose or a pressure washer to clean my car? Uh, what's left for me? Waterless washes should only be used as a last resort alternative, but if you can at least fill up a bucket with water, what is recommended and a viable alternative is to have a rinseless wash which encapsulates the dirt particles, lifts them off the surface safely, and has enough lubrication for you to dry the vehicle at the end. So I would recommend one of two rinseless washes, which are probably the two best on the market. There's the McKees 37 N914 rinseless wash, and the other one is a classic by Optimum Polymer Technology. This is Optimum No Rinse, also known as O&R. And on top here, by the way, for those who always ask, this is a bottle proportioner. So you squeeze the quantity that you desire in there, you pour it in your wash bucket, and that's it, you're good to go. Both of these products, by the way, a little goes a long way. So half an ounce for every gallon of water. So that is very highly concentrated. You don't need that much. And you can also have different dilutions for use as clay bar lubricants, uh, as uh, quick detail sprays there's a bunch of uses that you can have but if you don't have access uh, to water with a garden hose or a pressure washer that's a good alternative so a rinseless wash Next, if you do have access to a pressure washer and water, uh, what I highly recommend is to have a foam cannon. So this is good for the pre-wash stage because you're spraying your vehicle with a snow foam. So it's gonna gently help to lift any loose dirt and debris and add lubrication on the surface before you're doing the manual hand wash. So you're reducing the chances of scratching and marring the paint. Uh, one of the uh, ones that I tested in a battle video of my favorite foam cannons, this is the uh, Griot's garage and this is the brilliant finish foam cannon so it works super well uh, it is quite inexpensive for the performance that it gives you it is well built and another one of the staples in my foam cannon lineup you guys have seen it in tons of my videos it's probably as high end as it goes if you can splurge this is the mtm pf22.2 uh, by the way this is not a sponsored video nobody paid for this video i'm just sharing my thoughts and make sure for the majority of the foam cannons they have these quarter inch quick connection types. So you're gonna need a quarter inch quick connect on your foam cannon's gun to be able to switch with your lance for rinsing and the foam cannon like this. If not, some use proprietary connectors, so check with the foam cannon that you have. Uh, next, you're gonna need a glass cleaner. So once you're done uh, washing the vehicle and you're done with everything and it's dry at the end, to have that nice finishing touch, we're gonna have a glass cleaner. Now, there's a lot of products that we have here today that we're also gonna use in the interior. So you purchase a lot of this stuff and tools and equipment once, and it's gonna have multiple uses, right? Uh, so one of them is the Gion glass cleaner. So this is ammonia-free, it's an automotive grade, so you can use this even on tinted film on the inside and it will not damage your glass. Uh, it cuts through grease and grime very easily and it just works well. It doesn't leave any streaks in the finish. And for cleaning glass efficiently, you're gonna need microfiber towels, but the best ones are short nap towels that will not lint. That is very important. So one that I like is this waffle weave microfiber glass towel by The Rag Company. Uh, the Rag Company makes some of the best microfiber towels. And uh, this one here, I just love waffle wheels because Look at this, see that waffle pattern? So they just work super well. I have a glass cleaning tutorial, by the way, on my channel, so go check that out. So you're done washing your vehicle, uh, you rinsed it out, and while it's still wet, and you're towel drying the vehicle, so you have the chance, the choice, to use either a blower, I'm gonna talk about that in a few seconds, if you want to, if you have a bigger budget and you want things to go quicker and you want a touchless drying experience, but the majority of people use a microfiber drying towel. Do not use synthetic chamois or real skin chamois, those are things of the past. You wanna be soft on your paint. And what we use these days are microfiber drying towels. Now, I had uh, done a video, I think a year and a half ago or a year ago, on the best microfiber drying towels. And the one that had won the battle was this, the Rag Company Gauntlet. So this is a twisted loop microfiber drying towel. Why? Because it has twisted loops. So these are the most absorbent 
type of microfibers and they just do a great job at picking up water. You have different sizes available depending on how large or how small your vehicle is. And when you're towel drying your vehicle with a microfiber drying towel, what you're gonna wanna use is a drying aid. What is a drying aid? Basically, it's a quick detail spray and that's gonna do two things. It's gonna help to boost the gloss and the slickness on your paint. Some even add a bit of protection in there to replenish the protection of whatever's on your vehicle, but it's mainly gonna act as a lubricant. So see that as a buffer between the paint and your drying towel. You're gonna have this liquid that you're spraying on as a quick detailer on the surface and it adds added lubrication. So you're basically reducing the chances again of scratching and marring the paint. The majority of scratches uh, and uh, all the defects or swirls that are on the paint happen usually in two phases, when you're hand washing the car and when you're hand drying the car. So if you use proper washing and drying techniques, you're reducing the chances of having those. So one of my favorite drying aids as of recent is the Phoenix EOD Titan. So this is a hybrid detailer. Why? Because it has SiO2 technology or ceramic technology inside there. Uh, I used to also have a bead maker that was a classic, right, by PNS. A lot of you guys love this. This has tons of gloss, tons of slickness, and it's still very good. Uh, but many people didn't like the fact uh, that it perhaps uh, had a bit uh, too much dust attraction in their environments. I didn't have that issue. However, it can happen to some people uh, and it doesn't really last long. So this is about three weeks to about a month of durability because it's just a synthetic paint sealant. So this one here, up to three months of durability, but the gloss and slickness that it gives, tremendous. So great job on this. And the cool thing about this one too, just like Beadmaker, you can apply this on top of any existing protection. Regardless, if you have a wax, a paint sealant, a ceramic coating, or a graphene coating, you can apply this. You can use this on dry paint or on wet paint as a drying aid. So this one here, uh, the Titan, once again, hybrid detailer by Phoenix EOD, uh, an American company. This works very, very well. You're done uh, washing your car. It's fully dried up. You uh, towel dried it using your drying aid. It looks glossy. It looks, uh, it feels slick to the touch. It looks amazing. The, usually the last final detailing touch is to apply a tire dressing. Because don't forget, the first step, we cleaned the wheels and tires right before we cleaned the paintwork. And uh, you degreased the tires to make sure you remove any previous tire dressing. And now you want to replenish that UV protection. Uh, you want to add, of course, some suppleness to the rubber, make sure you're not getting any browning, and also have that dark appearance. So in one of my videos recently that I had done on one of my favorite new tire, tire dressings that I had tested, uh, the winner of that battle was this one here. So this is the Adams Polishes Graphene Tire Dressing. Don't get hung up on the graphene word. Uh, I think basically in this, it's made a bit for the darkening effect. Uh, so it's not a uh, dressing that's gonna last you for six months. This is not a tire coating. This is a tire dressing. It's still water-based. It just works super well. The price is amazing. Uh, it smells great. It applies on very easily. Uh, and the fact that it's in spray form like this, it's also good for the people who have those larger, fatter tires, the all-terrain tires, mud tires, those kinds of things. Uh, applying a gel could take forever. So if you're using a spray uh, and an appropriate applicator, it can be very, very easy. And talking about applicator, that's another thing I really, really enjoy, is this one here. So this is the Adams Hex Grip Tire Dressing Applicator. So it's like a puck, very easy to hold in your hand. It contours itself very well. It has these dimples there that can absorb either the liquid or spray that you're putting on there. And you're gonna scrub the um, tire dressing on top of your sidewalls. You're gonna remove any excess with a microfiber towel if need be, and uh, that's it. You're good to go for some extras. If you have the budget, the best thing you could have in your arsenal to wash a car also is a pressure washer. Now that doesn't mean that you can do a good job if you have a regular garden hose. Uh, that still works for the majority of people Heck, when I was 16 years old, 25 years ago, when I started detailing, uh, I used to use just the regular garden hose when I started until I had enough funds to purchase a pressure washer, uh, but that works well. And you can only use, by the way, foam cannons with a pressure washer, but if you wanna have that foaming capability and you just have a garden hose, note that there are foam guns. So those are attachments that go directly onto your um, regular garden hose and you can dilute a snow foam in there and still have that foaming experience. Of course, don't expect shaving cream-like texture or as thick or as 
rich of a foam as you'd get with a pressure washer and foam cannon setup, but it's a great alternative for those who have just a garden hose. Obviously, you're gonna have some buckets, right? So I like to use a two bucket system to wash the paintwork. So one to rinse your wash mitt, to leave all that dirt in there, and a second one with your clean wash solution. I use five gallon containers like this or five gallon uh, buckets. So I have two of those for the paint and I have a third one just for the wheels. So because I don't wanna contaminate the junk that comes out of the dirtiest parts of the vehicle, which are the wheels, with what we use for the paint. And inside each bucket, I have a bucket filter. So you could use your traditional grit guards or these newer style. These are dirt locks that are absolutely amazing. They're like these turbine venturi funnels and they really help to keep the uh, dirt in the bottom of the bucket. So imagine this that you put inside your bucket and it's going to keep all that dirt inside there. So that the dirt lock, by the way, that water bucket filter is made by the detail guards. So this is very high quality and I have those in all my buckets and you're good to go. Now, another splurge, if you have the budget, if your vehicle has some sort of protection, so it's a wax, a sealant, a ceramic coating, or a graphene coating, you're getting a lot of that awesome hydrophobic properties, right? So tons of great water beading, and water is gonna be very quick to sheet off the vehicle, making the drying stage a lot easier. So yes, you can use a microfiber drying towel and a drying aid, but if you have the budget and you wanna be more efficient and have a touchless way of drying your vehicle, get a car dryer, so either a cord cordless leaf blower here. This is my Ego 650 CFM blower. So uh, again, cordless, battery operated, and you can do, you can uh, dry your car in a matter of a few minutes, usually four to five minutes, and you're done because the water is just gonna fly off the paintwork. Or you could get a dedicated car dryer. I have a few of those. Uh, you can go watch a video on my channel, by the way, of my favorite car dryers. So I have the Metrovac Master Blaster Revolution uh, or the uh, Big Boy Blower R Pro and those kinds of things. But uh, yeah, just a regular leaf blower can also do. And if you have some form of protection on your vehicle, the water again is just gonna fly off and you're increasing speed but you're also reducing the need for contacting your paint with your hands because you're not towel drying so again you're reducing the chances of scratching or marring your paint. Uh, blowers just a caveat though uh, they don't work as well on unprotected paint so if your paint has zero protection on it the water is going to slide off a lot slower so it's a lot more tedious to do it with a blower so obviously if you're watching this video you're passionate about detailing and I'm sure you have some sort of protection on your paintwork. So guys I hope you enjoyed this smash the thumbs up button again all of the links Links to the tools, products, and equipment will be placed in the description under the video. And don't forget to keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next video for the interior detailing kit. See ya!